HIV Tri Dot Rapid Test. The HIV test is a visual, rapid, sensitive, and accurate immunoassay for the differential detection of HIV 1 and HIV 2 IgG antibodies in human serum or plasma using HIV 1 and HIV 2 antigens immobilized on an immunofiltration membrane. Test Principle HIV antigens are immobilized on a porous immunofiltration membrane. Sample and reagents pass through the membrane and are absorbed into the underlying absorbent. As a patient's sample passes through the membrane, HIV antibodies, if present, bind to the immobilized antigens. Conjugate binds to the FC portion of the HIV antibodies to give distinct pinkish-purple dots against a white background. Primary Sample Only serum must be used for testing. Should a delay in testing occur, store the sample at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Samples can be stored for up to a week. Do not use hemolyzed serum. Patient Preparation No special preparation of the patient is required prior to specimen collection by approved techniques. Type of container and additive. Collect 2 ml of venous blood in a plain red-topped vacutainer. Reagents and consumables. HIV tri dot test device. Buffer solution. Protein A conjugate. Sample dropper. Safety precautions. The use of disposable gloves is strongly recommended while running the test. In case there is a cut or wound in hand, do not perform the test. Do not smoke, drink or eat in areas where specimens or kit reagents are being handled. Tests are for in vitro diagnostic use only and should be run by competent persons only. Do not pipette by mouth. All materials used in the assay and samples should be decontaminated in 1% sodium hypochlorite solution for 30 to 60 minutes before disposal or by autoclaving at 121 degrees centigrade at 15 psi for 60 minutes. Do not autoclave materials or solution containing sodium hypochlorite they should be disposed of in accordance with established safety procedures. Wash hands thoroughly with soap or any suitable detergent after the use of the kit. Consult a physician immediately in case of accident or contact with eyes. In the event that contaminated material are ingested or come in contact with the skin puncture or wounds. Spills should be decontaminated promptly with sodium hypochlorite or any other suitable disinfectant. Protein A conjugate and buffer solution contain sodium azide as a preservative. If these material are to be disposed of through a sink or other common plumbing systems, flush with generous amounts of water to prevent accumulation of potentially explosive compounds. Test Procedure Take care of the following points before starting the test. Bring all the reagents and specimens to room temperature before beginning the test. The immunological sequence of reactions which take place during different procedural steps shows best performance at room temperature. Place the required number of HIV tri dot test devices at the working area. Tear off the pouch and take out the device for performing the test. Write the sample number to be tested on the device. While adding sample or reagents to the device, be sure to allow each solution to soak in before adding the next solution. If the solution does not soak in within 40 to 60 seconds, observe the sample for any suspended particulate matter. If it is present, centrifuge the sample at 10,000 rpm 
for 15 minutes and use a fresh device to rerun the test. All solutions and samples should be added to the center of membrane. For consistent results, ensure free falling of drops on the membrane. Do not use kit components beyond the expiration date. The procedural sequence of reagent addition should be strictly adhered to avoid any discrepant results. Add three drops of buffer solution to the center of the device. Hold the dropper vertically and add one drop of patient sample using the sample dropper provided. Use a separate sample dropper for each specimen to be tested. Add five drops of buffer solution. Add two drops of liquid conjugate directly from the conjugate vial. Add five drops of buffer solution and read results. Interpretation Non-reactive If only one dot, that is, the control dot appears. The specimen is non-reactive for antibodies either to HIV-1 or HIV-2. Interpret sample as non-reactive. Reactive. If two dots, one for the control and the other for HIV-1, appear, the specimen is reactive for antibodies to HIV-1. If two dots, one for the control and the other for HIV-2, appear, the specimen is reactive for antibodies to HIV-2. If all the three dots, one, each for control, HIV-1 and HIV-2, appear, the specimen is reactive for antibodies to HIV-1 and HIV-2. Invalid test. Control dot fails to appear. Insufficient specimen volume or incorrect procedural techniques are the most likely reasons for control dot failure. Review the procedure and repeat the test with a new test device. If the problem persists, discontinue using the test kit immediately and contact your local distributor. Quality control procedure. Internal quality control. Use positive and negative internal kit controls alongside patient samples. These controls are provided in commercially available kits. Alternatively, a previous day's known positive or negative patient sample can also be used as in-house quality control. External quality control. This should be performed once in three months by external quality assurance scheme or a QAS with an accredited EQUAS provider. Maintain record of your EQUAS results. In case of discordant results, take appropriate corrective and preventive actions. Potential sources of variability. The kit works best when used with fresh samples. Samples which have been frozen and thawed several times contain particulates which can block the membrane, hence resulting in improper flow of reagents which may make the interpretation of results difficult. Optimum test performance depends on strict adherence to manufacturer's instructions as written in the kit manual. Any deviation from test procedure may lead to erratic results. This is only a screening test. All samples detected reactive must be confirmed by using HIV Western blot. Therefore, for a definitive diagnosis, the patient's clinical history, symptomatology, as well as serological data should be considered. The results should be reported only after complying with above procedure.